Dr. Brennan, the acting deputy director at the National Hurricane Center, joining us now. And Dr. Brennan, I talked with you yesterday and we were looking at that forecast cone of uncertainty. It looks like there have been some slight adjustments a bit more to the west. Can you kind of talk about what you all are seeing there at the National Hurricane Center? The uncertainty out at uh, late, late this week in the Gulf of Mexico is still very large. We could see the hurricane make landfall along the west coast of Florida, so even south of the Tampa Bay area, up through Tampa Bay, all the way up into the Florida Panhandle. We could see uh, impacts in the Florida Keys, even in South Florida, uh, mainland South Florida as well. So, you know, there's, there's going to be the potential for widespread impacts across much of Florida. We don't know exactly where those worst sort of life-threatening impacts in terms of storm surge, hurricane force winds, and the heaviest rain will occur yet. We're hoping to be able to refine that forecast, you know, during the next couple of days. And one of the things when we, you know, here at Weather Nation, we're always reading the discussion when it comes to the National Hurricane Center. You all are working so hard to give us all these details. And you do yeah. mention rapid intensification with this storm. Right. Can you go into detail on what that means and what ingredients will be there for that rapid intensification? Sure, yeah. Well, as, as Ian moves into the northwestern Caribbean, that area has some of the warmest water temperatures in the whole Atlantic Basin. So, and the upper level winds are expected to be very favorable, very light upper level winds that'll be uh, allow Ian's uh, you know, circulation to sort of take advantage and pull all that energy out of the warm ocean. And so we are expecting essentially rapid strengthening as a, to a hurricane overnight tonight and during the day Monday and then reaching major hurricane intensity as Ian nears the western Cuba and then continuing to strengthen. We're forecasting now a category four hurricane as Ian gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So rapid strengthening, rapid intensification is about a 35 mile per hour increase in the winds of the storm in a 24 hour period. So it's a pretty substantial uh, strengthening rate. And I was wondering if you could talk about the category. Sometimes those get a lot of the headlines. And I remember talking to yeah. Ken Graham last hurricane season, and he said, you know, there's not much of a difference from a strong category three to a weak category four. So can you talk about that? What people should be preparing for what could be on the way through the eastern Gulf? Yeah, it's really all about the impacts and the category really only tells you about the potential for the worst wind impacts in the storm with those peak winds and our ability to determine how strong a storm is even right now is good to maybe only within five to 10 miles per hour. So the and, and the, the message for the west coast of Florida is very sensitive to storm surge, regardless of how strong the hurricane is. If you get a big wind field that's going to push that Gulf water inland, you can have significant storm surge in uh, you know places like Tampa Bay from a strong tropical storm, much less a hurricane or even something near major hurricane strength. It also has to do with the size of the storm, how fast the storm's moving, and, and the size and, and motion of the storm also has is, is the primary factor in how much rainfall you're going to get from the storm, not really how strong the winds are. So those other hazards really don't track with the category itself. The category is really only focused on the wind. So people need to focus on those other water impacts or the ones that kill the most people, storm surge and then the rainfall flooding. Dr. Michael Brennan, we appreciate you joining us always here on Weather Nation, acting deputy director there at the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And we'll be checking back in with the NHC throughout the next few days. Again, we appreciate you joining us.